decide, hey there guys, we're going to talk about um, one of the other conics, uh, which is just a parabola. And this is either the easiest one for you or the hardest one for you. So uh, for me, I don't like it very much, but I'm going to try to make it easy for you. Uh, what I've done here is I've started with something you should be familiar with from good old fashioned algebra um, 2. So you've probably seen this before, and we're going to use this to graph parabolic conics as well. Uh, the main change that we are going to make is that the A that, that is your dilation, I want you to also be able to view that as the formula 1 over 4P. Now, the reason that it's important to be able to know that this dilation could also be written this way is because um, whenever we graph parabolas in conic form, we're going to have to find something called a focus and a directrix. And whenever you need to find those, they are, spe they are spe a specific distance from the vertex. And um, that distance from the vertex is the P that's in the problem, okay? So we have to be able to find P just given a dilation. Now, I also wrote this form over here. And what you've probably noticed is everybody's been scrambled. The X and the Y are switched. The K and the H are switched. And that is because sometimes parabolas can go sideways. And um, when that happens, uh, this is what the parent function will look like. So uh, the way that I also remember it is, is um, they're either going to go left or right, and I really look at this uh, dilation. If it's positive, um, then the parabola faces to the right, so it faces in the positive direction. If that A is negative, okay, a negative A, uh, it's going to face to the left. So um, that's important to note. Over here, you probably already know that a positive A goes up and a negative A would make it go down because, like I said, you've been doing that for, well, probably since Algebra 1 even. Okay, so now let's actually do an example. And um, got some mess down here. Okay. So the first thing that I always do is if I see a problem um, and it's not exactly what I want it to look like, I, I make it look like I like I need it to, like one of the two parents above. So you want to look at where is the squared. Now on this one, the squared is on the y. And what that tells you is that we need to work with um, this one right here because the squared is on the y up there. So we, my goal is to get x by itself if that's the case. So how do I get the x by itself? Well, I'm going to start by subtracting 3 from both sides, right? And if I do that, now this equation here, is going to look just like the parent function. Let me go ahead and scoot that x over. Okay, great. So now it looks like what's above. And um, based on that, if we look above, it says that the h and the k are now right here. And so my vertex is going to be negative 3, positive 1. And um, I always graph these as I go. I know some teachers just show you a bunch of formulas and then you're supposed to write out all the formulas. I cannot do this without visualizing it. So I'm going to go to the point negative 3, 1 and actually sketch my vertex. Now I need to decide if this is going to go up or down or left or right. And based on what we said earlier, this is a positive A and it's um, the parent function like this, so it means it's going to open to the right. So it's going to be something like this. Now I'm just kind of sketching a quick curve just so I can see what it kind of looks like. And now you find those specific things like a focus and a directrix just to help you um, make the picture even better. Okay. Now the focus and the directrix, I'm going to need to find P first so that I can put them in the right place. And the formula that we have is 1 over 4P is the same thing as whatever is in the A position on our function. Now A was just the dilation, guys. So I'm just going to stick this 6 right here in this formula and then I'm gonna solve. Now if you're like wigging out like how am I supposed to solve this? Well just put this over 1 and cross multiply. Just do a proportion. Okay, So 1 times 1 is 1 and then 4p times 6 is 24p. Now how do I solve for p? Well I divide both sides by 24. Okay, so now I'm getting that P is 1 over 24. That means my focus and my directrix are this distance 
away from the vertex. Now, this is hard to graph, and, and your teachers know this, so they're not going to be like overly critical of you. You just need to go, okay, 1 over 24th, that's a really small number. So I need to go to the inside of the parabola, 1 24th, and the reason I go to the inside is because the focus is always on the inside of the shape. So my focus is that red dot right there. And if I need to label that point, I'm going to use this 1 24th and I'm going to use the vertex to help guide me. So what's happened here is the focus is at an x value of negative 3, but then I've gone over 1 24th from that. So the way I'm going to write this is I'm going to write, okay, I started at negative 3, and then I'm going to add to that the 1 24th so that I can get to this red point right here. And then the y value stayed the same. So I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, if you want to do the arithmetic and actually add negative 3 plus 1 24th, you can, but I'm just going to leave it alone. Now the directrix is always behind the shape, so I'm going to switch to green now. So I'm going to go behind the vertex a distance of 1 24th, and I'm going to draw a vertical line. And this would be your directrix. A directrix is always a line. And so the equation of a vertical line is always x equals something. Now, that something is going to be found the same way we just did the focus, guys. We're going to go to the vertex, but now we're going to kick it back 1 over 24th. So I still start at negative 3, but instead of adding the 1 over 24, I'm going to subtract the 1 over 24. And then that is my answer. Like I said, you can do the arithmetic and simplify it, or you can just leave it alone. And this is graphing parabolas. So step one, make it look like one of the two parents above. Once you do that, you'll be able to decide if it's up, down, left, or right and um, you'll get your focus and then find your focal distance, solve for P, and just talk yourself through it. Um, do they get more difficult? Of course they do. Um, there could be completing the square involved. It could look really funky and there'd be a lot of rearranging involved. But um, for the most part, this is what you do. And um, if you find some tricky ones that you want me to work out, just send them my way. Thank you.